Hello and welcome to Comprehensive ASP.NET MVC. My name is Nelson LeKay, and with me is Mr. Steve Curtis. Hey, Steve. Hey, everybody. All right, let's take a step back first and talk about why exactly you would want to learn ASP.NET MVC. I've been using it since around late 2009, right around when it really started to gain traction and was released from beta. And I find it to be one of the most pleasant frameworks to work with. Now, it is important to understand that ASP.NET MVC is a Microsoft technology. It's built on ASP.NET, which in turn is built on .NET. Now, this ecosystem of .NET has typically really seen some resistance in the wider web development community recently. That being said, ASP.NET MVC is actually a really big step forward for Microsoft and one of the reasons why it's so popular. Now, it is actually open source, and a lot of the components we use in this series are going to also be open source projects that are a part of the massive .NET ecosystem. So basically, ASP.NET MVC is a framework that allows us to build websites, but it's important to understand that it differs from some other web frameworks insofar as it's not very opinionated. ASP.NET MVC gives us a lot of powerful infrastructure, but doesn't tell us how to write our code. I find that it makes beginners really frustrated when they start with ASP.NET MVC because they get confused about how they're going to be doing database access, database migrations, and deployment, and all that stuff. Well, this video series is built specifically to answer some of those questions and to give you a viable best practice solution to those problems. And Nelson can attest, I don't know anything about programming, and by the end of this course, even I understood what and how and where we needed to use some of these best practices. Right. So let's look at the website. Now, this website is actually being hosted on a local virtual machine of visuals of, whoops, <laughs> Windows Server 2012, which means, yes, we will be talking about deployment. So we have a basic blog. Now a blog sounds like a rather boring project because it's what a lot of beginner projects use. And that's exactly what makes it a good choice. We know blogs, we understand blogs, and I don't have to spend any time explaining to you guys what a blog is or how it should work. So we have a couple features that are very important, such as tags and posts, as well as users and authentication. We also have a fully featured administrative side that allows us to add posts and manage our users. The techniques that we go through to build these interfaces are really applicable to virtually every single type of web application that you could possibly imagine to create. In fact, the only reason that this project isn't more complete is that you just have to repeat the same process that we've shown you guys how to get to this point. So for example, I can say my blog entry, I have a nice little WYSIWYG with some awesome stuff. We have tags, so I can say this one is a woe, I don't know, and an introduction post, I don't know, and then I'm going to publish it. And now it's published. So we can go back to the website and we can see it posted. So it really is a pretty straightforward project, but by being straightforward it allows us to focus on what really matters, and that is the code, the organization, the tools, and the best practices. This series is going to cover ASP.NET MVC itself, which includes all the things about controllers, routing, view engines, and so on. We talk about security inside of ASP.NET, which is a big and one. one. And this one, I, I have to interrupt because I was blown away by this. All of the horrible practices that I've seen by professional web developers, and then to see how easily and how quickly it can be done right. It, it, that section blew my mind. Right. And we want to make sure that we build our websites in such a way that it's difficult for them to be abused. So in addition to security, we also look at Enhibernate, a powerful library for working with data. Now, we don't go too in-depth with Enhibernate, but we do show a lot of it, enough to make it useful for your applications. Now, again, this is an ASP.NET MVC course, not an Enhibernate course. But of course, we need data access, so we'll show you guys what needs to be done to get to this point. We also show you guys how to version your database schema. 
This is something that is notably absent from virtually every like beginner course I've seen, with the exception of frameworks that come with migration support built in, of which, as we discussed, ASP.NET MVC does not. Next up, we talk about deployment to a real Windows server. We actually spool up a, a Windows server virtual machine, install IIS, configure it, install a database on it, set it up for deployment, and use Visual Studio's web deploy to push changes to it. We talk about error handling, and we also show some really awesome examples of what can be done with jQuery and Bootstrap. If you're looking at this thinking that the CSS or JavaScript would be scary, um, in fact, there is very little of it. Instead, our framework choices of Bootstrap and jQuery make our code very clean and also look really good at the same time. Correct me if I'm wrong, Nelson, but really, this ASP.NET MVC course is the one you wish you'd had when you first started learning it and covers a lot of the topics that you don't normally see covered. Exactly. That's why I put it together. That's why I organized it in the way that I did. I wanted all these questions answered so early on, and very few beginner tutorials, if any, well, none of them cover all of this stuff. And you might find bits and pieces in other beginner tutorials, and you'll have to kind of mash them together in your mind. But I really wanted to make a clear course on ASP.NET MVC and how it's used, how it's used well, and how it's used securely. Okay, there's one thing that is important to understand about this course and the rest of 3D Buzz's tutorials. No source code from this course is going to be available for download in any way. We do this for a reason. Basically, the way I see training material is simply guided practice mixed with lecture. We don't provide the source code because it is absolutely, fundamentally, ridiculously, insanely important that you type this out yourself. You must. If you do not type it out yourself, you will lose a lot of the value of following along with training like this. It is a time investment, but we are here to, well, be with you along the entire road. So I really hope you guys enjoy this course, and I really, really hope that, well, you guys have as much fun watching it as we did making it. So with that, I think it's pretty much time to actually get started. Well, and don't forget, Nelson, if you guys do have any questions, you can always post on the forums. You can get a lot of help, not just from us, but some great people on there. And if you're really, really stuck, you can PM Nelson, because I'll be useless. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. All right.